Enzo here with another video. Today we're switching things up and we're moving away from the microcontrollers for a second and we're moving into some software defined radio stuff. So this involves uh, all sorts of frequencies and you can do quite a lot of interesting things. So if you've ever been curious about software defined radio or SDR, uh, this is a perfect place to start. Um, so whether you're a complete beginner or um, just curious about what all this is, I'm going to break it down in uh, simple terms and show you some cool stuff you could do with it and give you some tips to get started. And then on the next videos, we're going to use uh, Dragon OS with um, Raspberry Pi so we can communicate uh, with the HackRF. And I know a lot of people are familiar with the HackRF through the Porta Pack, um, but we're going to do um, more so the hacker version. Um, a little bit more difficult, but I'll show you kind of the easier way. So, looking at some uh, tech specs real quick, um, you can pull up the HackRF docs. Um, but it has a half duplex transceiver. Um, that means that it could either receive or transmit signals, but it's not full duplex, so it can't receive and transmit at the same time. Uh, this will be for a much <clears throat> future video, um, but if you would like full duplex, then you're going to need something such as this Libra SDR <clears throat> or the B210 Mini. Um, but this is uh, way more advanced. Um, but just so you know, I will put the links down below uh, for that. Uh, this has an operating frequency of 1 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. So that covers everything from uh, car keys to 2.4 gigahertz, like Wi-Fi, wireless technologies, Bluetooth, and then um, up into the 5 gigahertz, like 5.8. So it's 5 gigahertz um, Wi-Fi networks and also cellular activity, some of cellular activity. Um, 5G cellular obviously goes um, way above 6 gigahertz for certain bands. Um, supported... Um, Supported sample rates, 2 MSPS to uh, 20 MSPS. Uh, resolution is 8 bits. Um, you interface with uh, USB. And this uses uh, micro USB. And um, it's powered through USB power. Uh, software controlled antenna port. Uh, max 50 milliamps at 3.0 to 3.3 volts. Um, SMA female antenna connectors um, terminated by 50 ohms. So we got that. Uh, and then um, SMA female clock input and output. So you have uh, two clocks right there. And that's for uh, synchronization. <clears throat> and then um, buttons. So we got a uh, dev, dev, dev button and a reset button. And then um, pin headers as well. So technically, you can make your own porter pack. And um, something I was thinking, just mainly um, it will be a PCB which um, I can make a custom one through PCB way <clears throat> and uh, the head it will, it will completely snap onto uh, these headers so then I can have a screen buttons and like a whole bunch of other stuff um, if I want and um, it's all open source and there's also uh, some LED lights and you can see the uh, main chips driving it and this is the uh, this is the FPGA, which is a field programmable gate array chip, which allows uh, the hacker to do uh, crazy functions. And then if you look at the documentation, you can find um, the pin layout for these headers. So you can um, customize it to your own applications. And then it comes with um, this antenna. 
So what is the Hack RF1? Um, so in short, it's software defined radio. Um, so you could basically think of this as the Swiss Army knife for wireless communication. So instead of needing like specialized hardware for things like FM radio, uh, Wi-Fi signals, even satellite uh, transmissions, the HackRF lets you do it all just using uh, software, uh, especially open source software um, with Linux, or really any um, operating system. Uh, it can transmit and receive signals, um, but only one at a time because it's half duplex um, from one megahertz to six gigahertz. Um, so more importantly, what are some cool things uh, you can do with this? Um, you can listen to FM radio, um, tuning into like any type of stations. Um, a little bit more difficult, but you could decode signals. But I'll show you how you could do that with uh, Dragon OS, so you can um, figure out how your like garage door opener works or car keys, and um, you can really, you know, get into demodulating uh, different things. Um, you could do airplane tracking um, using ADS-B signals, um, and these are transmitted by aircraft to show your location and speed. So you can have your own um, flight tracker. I know with um, the drone activity, um, <clears throat> flight trackers are really important, but you know, if you want something as accurate as possible, you could do it yourself as well. And then um, also exploring satellites and um, <clears throat> like amateur radio satellites or even weather satellite data um, can be reached. And then um, for some other cool things that we're gonna test is just like wireless security testing. Um, so we're talking about uh, cell phones, um, car keys, restaurant uh, pagers, all, all sorts of things that um, transmit signals under 6 gigahertz um, can be recorded, manipulated, and that's where you can kind of just test um, the security of uh, certain wireless things. Um, so yeah, it's pretty beginner friendly. Um, there's two ways you could get it. Um, I'll post links down below. Um, you could go through Amazon if you don't want to order straight through China, or you can get it through um, AliExpress too. Um, so it's kind of up to you. Um, but there's tons of different software available, um, like GQRX, um, SDR++, uh, GNU Radio, um, obviously Dragon OS. Uh, Universal Radio Hacker or URH is also a really good uh, tool. Yeah, so basically you just want to start simple. Like I said, on the next video, I'll go through um, how I use it currently with um, Raspberry Pi on this like mobile setup. Um, but you could also use Universal Radio Hacker with uh, Mac OS, I think, and Windows. I'm also probably gonna want to uh, upgrade this uh, antenna just for future uh, references and then uh, there's also um, some things like these uh, amplifiers and <clears throat> or excuse me a bandpass filter and in conjunction um, I probably would make a just like a custom PCB to kind of attach things all together I don't know um, but you could also um, amplify your signal too as well for um, security and educational testing purposes. Um, so there's a lot of different things you could do uh, with this uh, small device. Stock and out of the box, you know, I'm not saying you're limited, but it's really up to you because there's also, uh, this is really entry level FPGA device. And, you know, it steps up into bigger things like this is only about you know a few hundred dollars um, but then we get into um, more advanced uh, radios I, I got this through Aliexpress for a few hundred dollars but the <clears throat> the real version is of this is like three thousand dollars and then there's other more even more advanced radios that go upwards forty thousand dollars um, and these are radios that you could run your own <clears throat> radio station, you could run your own um, 5G network. Um, so there's a lot of levels to uh, this stuff, which is why the HackRF is kind of the uh, entryway 
and probably the cheapest, um, to be honest. And just a quick um, overview, quick little uh, technical overview of the HackerF, um, which is really just a combination. I mean, there's nothing magical. Um, but it's really just a combination of a whole bunch of different components and some really smart uh, engineering and has a really good uh, community around it too. So if you're interested, just uh, make sure you like and subscribe and there's definitely going to be a lot more as we start to dive into Dragonar OS, which is like Kali Linux for software defined radio and just uh, go from there. Peace.